Well, the Flat Earth Advocate, Mark Sargent, is with me tonight. Mark, good evening to you. Good evening. Well, it's good afternoon over here, but good evening. <laughs> okay, where are you? I'm on, over on, on the, west, the, world. We, the west coast of the United States, uh, Los Angeles. I don't know Angel where to say. Los Angeles I didn't know whether to say sorry, go ahead. I didn't know whether to say flat world or round world or, or, or what, but sure that's what we'll discover uh, in this. So why do you believe and when did you start believing the earth is flat? Sure. I started looking at it in the summer of twenty fourteen because I looked at just about everything on the internet that interested me and everybody hates flat earth, everybody knows about flat earth, and so I thought, ah, I might as well look at it. I'm older, I'll take a look, I'll debunk it, I'll shut it down in a weekend. And nine months later, at the beginning of 2015, I realized that I couldn't shut it down anymore, and so I made a series of videos, and I put them on YouTube, and they were called Flat Earth Clues, which is basically just a cry for help that said, okay, academia, Tell me where I'm wrong here, because if if life is a court case, I cannot prove the globe in a court of law anymore. And then the opposite happened. I, again, I thought the academia was going to shut it down, and instead they came at me with... Uh, There's so many people that came at me and said, you may be onto something, and then subject matter experts and a whole bunch of people, and a lot of people want to interview, and here we are, four years later. Yeah, well, that, and, and, and I couldn't possibly get across all the academic and, uh, and academia and, and shut it down immediately. But there's pr pretty much some basics in this, aren't there? How come we've got uh, different seasons sure. at different times in different locations on the earth? Yeah, well, it, it's it's a it's it takes a, quite a bit to get your head around. And I know if your listeners, we're not going to be able to do it in whatever the time we have here. Uh, but the short version is this, You're everything is different. So the world is in this tiny little rock flying around a sun, which is, the solar system is flying around the galaxy and so on and so on. We're talking about you're in a building, a giant structure, uh, no different than a terrarium, a planetarium, um, a soundstage as it were. Something that's so large that even our best and brightest didn't figure it out until about 1960, and that would have been the United States government and the Soviet Union. And they just decided to not tell anybody and be like, okay, whatever's happening here. But as far as the sun and the moon goes, uh, it gets even worse because the sun and the moon are tiny little objects that are just floating around us like a mobile above a child's crib. Uh, probably less than 50 miles wide, uh, the sun being like an incandescent light bulb and the moon being like an LED light bulb. But if the Earth were flat, mm -hmm. the sun's rays would be coming in at the same angle. And that would mean the USA, Australia, Italy, Argentina, they, they would all experience the seasons the same. No, well, it, it would, except that the, well, sun doesn't, of course they would. The, the sun doesn't follow the same track. It's like a, like a needle on a record player, if, if you're old enough to remember a record player where the, the needle runs in and out depending on how far it is in the album. So the sun doesn't take the same path across the sky. It may not even take the same altitude as far as we know. There's some things going on with the sun and the moon we don't know. We, we can't explain all the details. We're still working. We've only been doing this four years. But, I mean, at the same time, we've only had HD television for 20 years. So, how's that? So what, what are you saying to me? You, you're saying to me that we are what? This Explain it to me again. You think we're, we're, we're th that in... the earth is covered by a, a gigantic dome? Right. It'd be like a, like a I don't know if you have domed sports stadiums over in the UK, but... Uh, Not too many, but yeah, yeah okay. we get what you mean. <laughs> it'd be, it'd be like mean. being in a giant domed sports stadium, something that'd be thousands of miles wide. And uh, the ceiling doesn't have to be that high. It doesn't have to necessarily look like a snow globe. But that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about, uh, and I know it's a little dated, the 1998 movie, The Truman Show, where this thing is so large that you couldn't even, you know, it's got walls and a ceiling and a floor, which we're on, and nobody could figure it out because it was so big. You know, we couldn't see the forest for the trees. And, you know, it's kind of like a lake sitting in the middle of this building. And there's little islands in the middle of this lake, which we call continents. And again, we see them as gigantic things. But whoever built this place is uh, far more advanced than we are. And where have you got that from? As far like, as... Where have you got that from in your head in terms of this flat disk and we're covered by a gigantic dome? Where, where did this come from when you started investigating this? When I started looking at it, I initially... Again, looking just at the flat earth concept in general, like anybody, it's like, oh, how can it be flat? And then I was like, okay, if I were to build a flat world, 
how exactly would I would I build it? What what were the moves I would do? How would I you know what what sort of shape would it take and what sort of structure would it would it be? And I was treated because I was in the the computer world, uh, you know, tech world. I, heck, I even played video games for a living for some time, uh, for two decades. And when we build simulations, when we build artificial worlds, we build them completely flat and in a box. It's it's basically a, a flat world in a box. Now, of course, you can make it circular or whatever you want. But inside there, uh, the reason why we do it is it's easier. It's more efficient. Uh, the average person, uh, if you make you know the world big enough, isn't going to tell whether there's a curve or not. Uh, same thing with gravity and buoyancy and density and all the energy systems. They work better inside an enclosed flat system. And And you know that there will be some people listen to this who think you're a crackpot. Oh yeah, possibly. Fact, I in, look. In I, fact, I, there's a there, there's a pretty. Uh, uh, I learn something every day. There's a pretty cool name for it, isn't there? It's the Dunning Kruger effect, and oh, that's yeah. when people mistakenly think they know more than they do, and they fail to recognize the huge gaps in their knowledge or the extent of their incompetence. Sure, the Dunning sure. Kruger yeah, too, effect. Too, too Is dumb. That you? Yeah, too dumb to know the truth. Oh, I I know the term. But at the same time, this is different because everybody go, that goes into the flat earth hates it. Everybody, it, they always start in the negative, meaning everybody, nobody goes into flat earth thinking it's a great idea, especially me. I was extremely stubborn when I went into this thing. I, don't, I consider myself a very clever problem solver. And I'm looking at this thing, I'm, looking, there's, I'm saying there's no way, there's no way. And then what you do, I mean, you try to prove the globe. I mean, I'll ask anyone out there, I'm not necessarily asking you, but which is tell me how you know it's a globe without using a space program without referencing a space program and that takes away 90 percent of the arguments right there and then unless you're again into ha heavy academia you're gonna have some problems and then after a while there's just too many loose threads to where again can i prove to you right now that it, that it's a flat world no no i can't but i can create so much reasonable doubt in the globe the only place left you have to go to turn is a flat world some sort of a version of flat earth i mean there's half a dozen different versions out there, but they all, everybody agrees in the same thing. It's like, yeah, it's not a globe. So if you're proving it to me, give me more. Evidence. Okay. You want, you want five things real quick? Yeah. Okay. First, first things, if I was going to, again, does this prove unequivocally that, that we're, you know, we're on a flat stationary earth? No, but again, you'll see where I'm going with this. First would be long distance photography. And that is, uh, if you don't, go into the space programs. First thing, usually people say, oh, we've seen ships go over the horizon. There's lots of water out where you are. Ships go over the horizon. We all know it. Ships go off in the distance and they go and it seems like the, the hull's going first and the mass and that's it. And I'm going, yeah, you know what? 10 years ago, I absolutely would have been right there with you. But HD zoom technology, we can zoom in so far now that eventually, you gotta remember, these boats have to be on the other side of the curve. They have to be behind the curve. They have to be on the other side of the hill and they're not. You, you can zoom in anytime. It's like 30 miles away, 40 miles, 80 miles, 100 miles. In fact, the only limits that we have right now is the density of the atmosphere itself. I put a challenge out to science to say, show me an object that's off in the distance, a lighthouse, a ship, a structure. But you're disputing hundreds of years of science. Yes. Yes, I absolutely am. Absolutely. You've got to remember, though, it was hundreds of years of science, but before that, it was flat. And I know your Brian Cox will say that, no, flat Earth was actually a myth and nobody believed it. It's like, no, because everybody drew the same thing thousands of years ago everybody drew the same thing it was only 500 years ago that we went to the globe and now it seems like things are shifting sorry do, do i have time for the other points or not yeah okay uh second point would be atmosphere versus the gravity of um, uh, gravity of the world right so i'm sorry uh vacuum of space versus uh the, the gravity which is if remember the vacuum of space is extremely powerful extremely powerful and yet this little rock here holds on this wispy little smoke-like atmosphere on top of it and nothing gets sucked off into space. Where's the bleeding edge of space? Where does our atmosphere end and space begin? Because I can show you test after test after test that shows a vacuum chamber will rip everything off violently. And yet that never ever happens apparently. The pressure needs a container. That's the short version. So, so if we were to ask ourselves how far is Sydney and Australia from San Diego and Chile yes. on, on, on your map, in the actual world, Sydney, uh, to Santiago, Chile, Qantas flight 27, right. 7,000 miles. It's a 12-hour flight. Right. Now, this flight would be impossible on your flat Earth model. Should it be. It would require the plane to travel at twice the speed of sound, for goodness sake. Should be. We we know there's some per perspective. Should be. 
We know there's perspective problems with this map. We absolutely know. And we've been trying to work on it for the last three years. But the bigger question is, why are there... And that, that flight you mentioned, I get that flight mentioned to me all the time. The question is, why do 95% of the flights in the Southern Hemisphere, like the ones you were mentioning, take uh, double connections? Take we're, double... We're, we're, we're back to Dunning-Kruger effect again, isn't it? That you just don't wreck... Again, you just don't we, recognize No, no, no. If you want to, if you want you to say, say I'm too... On if, you want to say I'm too dumb to know the truth, that's fine. But again, we, I've got a subject matter list that's as long as your arm with pilots and engineers and all branches of the armed forces, uh, air traffic controllers, you name it. They all say the same thing. It's like, yeah, you're on to something because everything we use in our daily lives, we never take into account the curvature of the earth and we never take in the spin of the earth, especially with firing solutions. And I'm not talking about snipers. I'm talking about guys that are really shooting long ranges, howitzers, missiles, torpedoes, you name it. No one takes into account the Coriolis effect or, and the curvature. Or maybe, Mark, you're really clever and and you're a marketeer. You're a good salesman and you're making a fortune out of this. It, uh, it's your not, livelihood, make, the social network. Like It would cost you a fortune to admit you're wrong, right? No. Oh, you mean to, to prove to me that I'm wrong? It would cost you a fortune to admit you're no, wrong good because you're, make, the, make the YouTube money, hits make... and these films and these documentaries. No, 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 no. Well, okay, one, or... I didn't get paid a dime. Nobody gets paid for documentaries except for the director and the producers. The subjects, they sign a waiver. The, the movie doesn't get made unless they sign off. They just say, oh, I'll just move on to somebody else. I make, yeah, I make a little money off of YouTube. I make a little money off the book and I make a little money off the radio station. Not a lot of money. Nobody goes into flat earth to make money. Now, if it turns into a television show down the road, hey, great, fantastic. I am not banking on it, nor would I bet folding money that that would happen. But if it does, hey, fantastic. There are some moments in the, in the documentary. It's called Behind the, the, the Curve. Yep. It is on Netflix. Yep. And there are some moments, indeed, there are two key moments, aren't there? Yeah. Where the experiments show the opposite of what the flat earth advocates are hoping to demonstrate. Mm. And, and one of the experiments involves a flashlight. Right. That's Let, at the end of the documentary. A laser, yes. Pow power of editing. But it's, all, it's all I can tell you. The director in this case hated flat earth by the time he got to the end of it it started as a human interest piece i know the director pretty well and by the time we got to the conference and raleigh and he said so much as the in the uh, the itunes director's commentary he said once that 12 year old kid got up to the microphone and asked me questions that's when it turned for him that's when he knew he had to take a stance against flat earth and I get it. It's like, okay, fine. Well, hold on a minute. He, the director, wasn't taking a stance against it. Oh, absolutely, the he was. The experiment was against it. No, the no, 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 no. The experiment, the data, was against what you're suggesting. Again, power of editing. I have sat with team after team, and the teams that hate us, they will chop that thing up to make us look as bad as possible. But National Geographic was a perfect example of that. I shot with them for three days. And there was an experiment that they had set up with balloons across 10 miles off of a lake. And we saw it clear as day. And they admitted it. They erased it from the segment. And they went with a raft in the middle of the lake and just said, oh, no, no, absolutely. You can see the stripes disappearing at four miles. It's like, what happened to the 10-mile test you set up? You shot it six ways from Sunday. No, don't, don't tell me that, uh, that we failed in our experiments. We do amazing in our experiments. The, heck, the same time the Jaronism shot was done, we were shooting at Lake Balaton with the Guinness Book of World Records, who completely documented it at 40 kilometers. It was perfect. Did Okay, to be fair, did Jaron do a great job with that experiment? No, he did it for the first time, didn't do any rehearsals. There's not much I can tell you. He learned from it, but everything else is great. And why are different stars visible from different latitudes? Why? Oh, different projection systems. You're living in a box. I don't know how clear I can make this. You're living in a building, no different than a planetarium. If in a normal planetarium that's only a couple hundred yards wide, you use one projection system and you use one star system. But if it's even a hundred miles wide, you can get away with instancing the whole thing, which is a software term. It's very, very easy to do. And I know most of the listeners don't go into software development, but I can tell you it's simple. I, I, I guess why the director, you, you say he hated this. Yes. Um, I guess he might have thought that you're exploiting gullible people, that you're feeding into distrust of scientists and experts mm. and authorities. Right. Was that a question or a statement? Well, I'm 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 wondering what your reaction oh, is. Oh, oh, uh, well, 
It, no, it wasn't even that. He, I mean, he, yeah, he's science-based, no question. But where it got too far from him was when kids were being introduced into this, meaning that there were kids coming up and, and asking us questions and emailing us and calling us. And that really bothered him because up until that point, it was like, oh, you know, they're flat earthers. They're, they're nice people and everything, and they're, but they're relatively harmless. All of a sudden, he started looking down the road, which is exactly what National Ge I mean, he and National Geographic were completely on the same page. They asked me questions which I had never heard before, which is they said, and they never even used this in the segment, but it was straight up. They said, what happens when flat earth gets outside of your control? What happens to medicine? What happens to technology? What happens to civilization as, as we know it? Are you, couldn't it be possible that flat earth ushers in a brand new dark age? And I said, well, I think that may be a little heavy handed. But at the same time, it's like, you know what? We are the new scientists at this point. But you're not because you're not a scientist. De Define scientist. Some with a master's degree, something like that, in a, phys in a physical setting, university type thing. Well, well, tell me why you believe you are a scientist. Meaning, look, everybody can test. The scientific method can be used by anyone, with, which is scientific methods, really easy. Test, observe, repeat. And then, you know, if you like peer review, you show it to other people and they test review. I'm sorry, test, observe, repeat. Same thing, which is why you'd think, by the way, if Flat Earth was so easy to kill and everybody goes into the same thing and everybody runs down to the beach and shoots long distance photography and all these people use laser tests and all these people use all these other things, wouldn't you think we would have shot ourselves down by now? You see, you mentioned medicine, and, and, and medicine's interesting too, because the anti-vax movement tap into similar things, don't they? And children die as a result. <laughs> well, okay. Disputing no, and, and by the way, you, you, you and, and, and if you don't, and if you don't use this, that's fine. I, I don't mind, because this is kind of touchy for everybody. But uh, I, you brought up anti-vax, and, and I didn't. And, but I do have an opinion on it, which is, come on. Uh, the, the big pharma companies, when you have a massive drug company, you want to get into the vaccination program. You do. Unfortunately, every time a new vaccination gets introduced, the amount of testing you have to do goes up almost exponentially. And to the point where now, you know, back when I was getting vaccinations, it was what, six, seven, six, seven vaccinations. Now we're up to 30, I think. You can't test everything. And if there's a problem, between one of these, you know, one or two of these things, let's say, I, I shouldn't call it out by name, let's say the MMR and something else. Well, the problem is, if there's a problem and you know it, then lawyer's rules apply, which is you do not admit guilt until they have you. And sorry, the autism rate is gone, through, at least over here in the States, has gone through the freaking roof. It used to be one in 10,000. Now it's one in 40. And you've got to blame somebody. And if it's not the water and if it's not the food and it's not the atmosphere, what is it? So you got to pin on somebody. Worried, are you not worried, though, about your responsibility to be sure about what you're saying? Ra uh, 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 are we talking about flat earth or vaccinations? We, well, I kind of both. OK, because then vulnerable people can be exploited. Vulnerable people can be harmed. How, you, how, how can vulnerable people be exploited with vaccinations? I mean, how, how many, you, tr well, I might, challenge you. Watch, watch, watch 30. Watch into the anti-vax movement. <laughs> Look, there's something wrong with the vaccination program. I'm not saying shut down vaccinations, of course. But if somebody says, look, if you hold off on the MMR for another 18 months, the percentage of something going wrong go, you know, goes way down, it's something you should look at. But we, the, again, we, the lawyers won't let that happen because if any drug admits to it, the class action lawsuit kicks in and that company is gone, erased. We, were you, Mark, anti-establishment all your life? No. Like, have you look. disputed everything all no, your life? No, not at all. I was. I grew up on a rural island up in the middle of freaking nowhere. I didn't even believe that, that anyone in the po uh, position of authority lied until I got to university. And then I think the first thing I saw, because, you know, the internet wasn't out yet, was uh, Oliver Stone's JFK. And I thought, I said, wow, people could possibly lie. It's, 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 it's a possibility. No, I'm, in fact, I'm not anti-establishment. In fact, quite the opposite. You're I, not anti, yes, you are. No, 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 no. I believe in the greater good. I absolutely do. There's a lot of government decisions out there that are made that I side with the government, much to the dismay of, of the conspiracy community. But when it comes to, you know, I, but I call it as I see it, which is, look, there's something wrong with vaccinations. I think we should look at it. Uh, flat earth was just kind of a fluke that just came across my desk and it was like, Hey, you know what? I hate flat earth. And then the more I looked at it, I was like, you know what? 
it's not that nuts. And I hear that time and time again with everybody. How big is the flat Earth movement? Oh God, it's huge. It's you. You have no there idea how go. big it is. There's there's so many people ah. in it now that we even. Well, I'll give you a perfect example. When I'll just use relevant search results, and this will make sense. Uh, when I started into Flat Earth in 2015, if you typed in Flat Earth with no filters or anything in YouTube, I think there was like 50,000 relevant search results. Then you can take that however you want it. Before, in the middle of last year, that was at 20.9 million. And Donald Trump, if you type Donald Trump in, we came in at, he came in at 20.8 million. And then six weeks later, YouTube shut down the scoreboard. I mean, permanently for everybody. So Why there is there that? is no relevant search results anymore, right? So they 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 shut it down. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So you can't you can't find the numbers anymore. But you know the numbers are huge, oh, and monsters. you know you're selling to a captive audience. It's good business. It, it, again, it's not. Think about it this way: it's not. It it is probably the most unusual and polarizing topic that there is. If you go out and talk to somebody in the street fine you you meet them you talk about the weather you talk about the football scores and whatever but eventually before that conversation ends usually it goes into oh hey i heard something interesting if you eat three ounces of chocolate today it's good for you you know something like that and then this comes up because no matter what you bring up flat earth trumps it in some way and again it doesn't matter how um beautiful how powerful how rich how talented you are this topic seems to seep into everywhere. I mean, I've talked to A-list celebrities. I've talked to sports people. I've talked to people that cannot come out of the closet. 90% of our community won't come out of the closet because they're scared of friends and family and coworkers. I get emails every hour about people. It's like, oh yeah, I can't talk to my... I, can, I, I, am, I completely understand. But yeah, the community is... I'm trying is, to work is, you out. So you, say, you, you say that uh, you're making a little money out of this. How much? Oh, not much at all. Less than uh, if I convert it to pounds right now, probably less than 20,000 pounds a year. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, because but there's you, not because there's nothing. But if, you hit the, if you had a TV show, then you're on big money. That's well, yeah, your if goal I, here. Yeah, if you're selling snake oil, if if I got on a television show, yeah, I'd make bigger money. But that's what nobody's looking for that. I don't. I, and I'm so not. Why I'm, I'm absolutely. No, why are you here, here, me out here. Let me out here. I am not trying. I don't want to be famous. I don't. I was perfectly Come happy. On. No, no, no. Well, you're, I was you're perfectly doing, you're doing happy. A book. You're, you're behind this documentary. You're on here. Only because I was you're asked. You a telly show. You don't Ev want to be famous. Everything's unsolicited. I don't want to be famous. I want to be right. I loved sitting in Colorado with my popcorn and my wine, playing some video games, you know, working and... and uh, 20.8 million views on YouTube, conferences, merchandise. You're making money. No, and no, 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 no. you want to be famous. Uh, the producers make the money off the conferences. Whoever's selling t-shirts, I don't care. In fact, I not only did I not monetize my channel for the first six months until Google called me up and said, hey, you might want to monetize. I didn't even allow comments or thumbs up or thumbs down. I tried to keep this thing as low key as possible. I, it, it, the money doesn't make it. I, look, I grew up with money. I don't care about the money. All I care about is what's true and what's not true and everyone i think everybody out there wants that to some degree you know find out for yourself which is why at the very end of my videos i say pretty much the same thing which is look don't believe what i'm saying don't listen to me do your own research ask questions and if it turns out that, that you agree hey fantastic if you don't move on to something else nice to talk to you tonight mark thank you very much <laughs> thank you